Are you ready for God's word? Amen. How many of you have been waiting for God's word this morning? Yes? Awesome. Awesome. All right. I'm going to talk about discouragement. I'm going to talk about discouragement. I talk quite often on discouragement. Uh, last week, I spoke on disappointment. We all have disappointments in life. And, uh, and uh, disappointment has a twin sister, and that twin sister is discouragement. How many of you have been discouraged in your life at some point or the other? Pretty much everybody, right? We have all been discouraged at one point or the other. Something has happened to us, and uh, we just gave up. And, uh, and you, are, you are defeated not because you failed, but you're defeated because you gave up. And uh, discouragement wants to make you give up. How many times we feel like we want to just give up? I don't want to have this battle anymore in my life. I just don't want this anymore. I, I just don't seem to be cutting it. So I just want to give up. And that's called discouragement, friends. And, and uh, discouragement is one of those things that leads us to defeat. And as, as followers of Jesus, we need to overcome our discouragement. Amen? Let me tell you a quick story from the Bible. Exodus chapter 5, verse 1. Um, here's the verses. The Bible says, Afterward, Moses and Aaron went to Pharaoh and said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. Let my people go so that they may hold a festival to me in the wilderness. Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord that I should obey him? And let, let Israel go. I do not know the Lord. And I will not let Israel go. And they said, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Now let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God, or he may strike us with plagues or with the sword. But the king of Egypt said, Moses and Aaron, why are you taking the people away from their labor? Get back to your work. Then Pharaoh said, Look, the people of the land are now numerous, and you're stopping them from working. That same day, Pharaoh gave his order to the slave drivers and overseers in charge of the people. You are no longer to supply the people with straw for making bricks. Let them go and gather their own straw, but require them to make the same number of bricks as before. So Moses and Aaron are standing before Pharaoh, the most powerful man, and they're saying to him, let my people go as God has commanded. But Pharaoh says, who are you? And uh, let me make you work harder. Uh, that's the solution to your uh, problem. And uh, now look at verse number 22. Drop down in your chap uh, Bible and look at verse number 22 and verse number 23. Moses, now after standing before Pharaoh, Moses returned to the Lord and said, why, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Is this why you sent me? Ever since I went to Pharaoh to speak in your name, he has brought trouble on this people, and you have not rescued your people at all. So from being in the presence of Pharaoh and, and speaking to him, Moses now comes back to God and he's praying a prayer of discouragement and he's saying to God, God, you really haven't helped us at all. You really haven't done anything for my life. You really have not rescued your people like you said you would. You know those promises, God, that you gave in the Bible? Those promises don't seem to work. It's as if I am on my own and, and it's as if I'm doing a foolish thing here standing up for you. God, I am so discouraged because you have not done what you are capable of doing, and you have not done what you promised that you would do. So Moses and Aaron are in a very discouraged position, and their prayer reflects that. You know, God has not done what he said he will do, and, and there seems to be no victory in sight. There's no way I can get these people out of Egypt. So he's struggling with this concept, and he's thinking, you know, why didn't God do this? Look at verse number one. It says, afterwards, Moses and Aaron. Afterwards, after what? After having one of the greatest experiences of his life. 
You know, Moses was a, was a sheep herder for 40 years in the wilderness. And uh, during that time, he had forgotten about all the great things God has done in his life. For 40 years, he was a nobody just living a life of wilderness. And friends, sometimes we seem to be like that in our, in, in our life, a, a period of time where we seem to be in the wilderness. We seem to be like going nowhere, anywhere. And, 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 uh, and Moses uh, all of a sudden sees this fire, he sees this burning bush, and he goes towards it, and he realizes that it's the presence of God. God Almighty himself is speaking to him, and God is saying to him, you know, I have called you for a special purpose. I have a great ministry for you. You know, I'm going to give you signs and wonders, and, and God shows Moses signs and wonders, and Moses is all excited, and uh, he, at first he gives excuses to God, and finally, you know, he comes to this point of dedication, and he says to God, God, I'm going to go. I'm going to go and do what you told me to do. I'm going to obey. And I, I just believe that God is too powerful, and he will not forsake me. And he has this great spiritual experience, but then spiritual experience is one thing. Reality is another thing. So now, after this great spiritual experience, uh, Moses now has to go deal with reality. And the reality was a man on the throne who cared less for who Moses or Aaron or, or the God of Moses and Aaron was. He cared less. He had no concern whether these people suffered or not. He had no concern. All he cared about was that the bricks were made and that the buildings were built and the slave, slaves were working hard. That's all he cared about. He did not care that the people of Israel should be set free. He did not care for God. He did not care for uh, Moses or Aaron. So that is the reality, friends. Sometimes we have a great church experience. We read the Bible. We do our devotion. And, and we know God is a great God. But then, Monday morning, you have to show up to work. And you have to face the same situation all over again. So, so Moses and, and Aaron are dejected. And Moses is, is discouraged. And, and, and uh, he now, his, his obedience to God did not pay off. And now he has a dilemma. What does he do? After all, God spoke to Moses. He didn't speak to Pharaoh. Appears like Pharaoh did not get the memo. Pharaoh says, who are you? So now Moses and Aaron are discouraged. How many of you have been in that place of discouragement? Maybe you're a Christian kid and you want to follow Jesus and and uh, you learned the Bible in your Bible study, and your school teach, and your Bible study teachers, and your Sunday school teachers have taught you the Word of God. But you go to school, and your teacher says there is no God, and your friends mock you for believing in God. And now you find yourself in a place where, where uh, uh, called high school. It's a tough place to be, where 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 you now have to stand up and and depend on what you've learned from God. And it's a tough place to be, and sometimes kids get discouraged because what they see in church is not what they say in school. Maybe you're a single man or a, or a woman, and you're hoping to find a spouse, and you put your profile on Christian Mingle, and, uh, but all the matches that Christian Mingle gives you are people who are namesake Christians. They just want to mingle. They're not Christians, you know? <laughs> So, so um, you get all sorts of people, maybe 20 years older than you, or, or people who, who are just Christians for namesake. And you try and try and try. Nothing seems to be working. But God promised you something. It's just not happening. Welcome to Egypt. Welcome to reality. Or maybe you're an employee in a store and you want to be honest, you want to have integrity, but all your fellow workers are goofing off and joking and, and talking and, and gossiping and they get promoted and you don't because they think that you're a stick in the mud. Welcome to reality. Maybe you're raising your kids as, as godly as possible. You do all the right things. You teach them good values. You provide for them. And, and, and you live a good a married life. You do everything. And then your child grows up, reaches 18, and says, I'm never going back to church. 
All those people in church are hypocrites. What do you do? Welcome to Egypt again. A land of discouragement, a land where your spiritual experience is of no importance to those people who are living there. What do you do? Maybe you're a cancer survivor. Maybe you thought, uh, uh, maybe thought that uh, the disease is gone forever. Maybe you thought that uh, this is it, I've overcome it, and then two or three or four years later, the doctor calls you back and says, your cancer has come back. What do you do? Maybe God called you to be a pastor. God called you to be a teacher. Maybe God called you to be an evangelist. Maybe God called you to do ministry, a missionary. And, and, and you came with great passion to serve God, but the people did not accept your message. Or people in your church uh, 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 just wanted to get you fired. What do you do when those kind of situations happen? When your spiritual experiences don't meet our, our, our reality, what do you do? Many a times, this is what people do. They get discouraged. They say that it never works. They say that I've tried this, I've tried this again, I've tried this again, and I, and I just am fed up. I want to give up. But this morning, I want to encourage you, don't give up. Hallelujah. Don't give up. Don't give up on God's promises for your life. Don't give up on the dreams that God has given for you, for your life. Yes, you have failed. Maybe you tried to beat that addiction for many, many, many years. You went to rehab, you went to this, you went to that. You tried everything, and maybe none of it has ever worked. But the day you say, I'm never going to try again, you are defeated. But if you say, I am going to try, I am going to win this, I am still in the battle, you are still undefeated. Hallelujah. Don't be discouraged, friends. John Maxwell says, I have noted two types of people in the world, splatters and bouncers. I like that, splatters and bouncers. When splatters hit the bottom, they land with a thud and stick like a glue. How many of you seen those balls that you kids play with at dollar store and you take it and you hit it on the wall and it just sticks to the wall? It's like a... Uh, uh, gooey substance, you know, it just sticks to the wall, and uh, that is a splatter, and many, many people in this world, when they are hit with something hard, and they hit the wall, and, and, and they just splash, splat, and, and, and they go nowhere, but there are other people, he says, and they're the bouncers, you know, you throw them hard against the wall, and they bounce back, and they bounce back again, and they bounce back again, and they bounce back again. Friends, when you are a child of God, you don't have to be a splatter. You are called to be a bouncer. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. That is why the Bible says, Proverbs 24, 16, for the righteous fall seven times and rises again, but the wicked stumble in times of calamity. Friends, as long as Jesus is with us, we don't have to be discouraged. As long as God is on my side, I'm going to keep bouncing and bouncing and bouncing and bouncing. I am not going to accept defeat. I'm not going to go flat and splash on the ground. Have you become a splatter? Have you become somebody who has just given up? I don't think I can give up this. I don't think I can overcome this. I don't think I can make this through. I can't, I can't ever seem to go through this dark period of my life. Friends, with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible. God can change our life. You know, we just have to be honest before God. Sometimes we, uh, we are discouraged, but we are not honest with ourselves. We need to be honest before God. Look at uh, um, uh, what Moses did in verse number 22 of chapter 5. He says, why, Lord, why have you brought trouble on this people? Is this why you sent me? You know, God doesn't rebuke him for it. God doesn't say, you know, how come you're discouraged? How come you don't believe in me? God comes to Moses and he, he, he picks him up from where he was. And God moves on with the mission. You know, friends, 
If you are discouraged in your life, be honest with yourself. Be honest and say, you know what? I, 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 you know, things have not been the way I, I, I wanted it to be. You don't have to live a false reality. You can be true to yourself. You can be honest with God and say, you know what? I failed three times this year. I failed three times this week. You know, uh, this is what is reality in my life. And you can be honest with yourself and honest before God. That's step number one, to be honest before God. And the second thing, if you are discouraged, friends, I, I'll, I'll encourage you to refocus on the mission. So many people have been distracted. You know, there's another D that I always talk about. I always talk about these three Ds. How many of you remember that? You know, I talk about, uh, I talk about uh, distraction. I talk about uh, discouragement. And uh, last week I talked about disappointment. You know, we get so distracted from our mission because we have failed. Maybe God called you to start a business and you started it and it, it just isn't going uh, anywhere and it, you just gave up. Why? Because uh, things were hard and things are always going to be hard, but, but the bouncer comes back and refocuses on the mission. They don't get distracted by their failures. And look at what God does. And uh, God responds to uh, the prayer of Moses. You know, God responds to the prayer of Moses not by saying, hey, how dare you question me? God uh, responds to the prayer of Moses by saying, Exodus chapter 6, verse 1, God says, and the Lord said to Moses, now you will uh, see what I will do to Pharaoh because of my mighty hand. He will let them go because of my mighty hand. He will drive them out of this country. Now, look, there are two things God doesn't do here. Two things God doesn't do in his response to Moses. God does not say sorry. God doesn't say, oh, sorry to hear that. Things didn't work out the way that it should have worked out. Sorry that your dad didn't accept you. Sorry that your mom did not love you. So God never apologizes to Moses. God never says, you know, sorry, Moses, I guess I forgot to email Pharaoh and tell him that you're coming and to listen to you. I, I guess I forgot that. God didn't say that. God never apologizes because you know why? God never makes a mistake in our lives. Can I hear an amen to that? Hallelujah. God never apologized to Moses and say, hey, Moses, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear you feel that way. <laughs> You know, some people apologize that way. Instead of saying, I'm sorry for what I did, they'll say, I'm sorry that you feel that way. You know, in other words, they say, I'm sorry that you are sorry. <laughs> but God does, does none of that. God does none of that because God is sovereign and everything that happens in our life, God knows even before it happened. Amen? So God never says, I'm sorry, and God never gave an explanation. God doesn't say to Moses, Moses, you know why I'm doing this, Moses? Let me give you my game, game plan, Moses. It's because these people have been slaves in this country for 400 years, and by giving them this extra work, I'm actually making them feel like they no longer want to be slaves because I cannot do a miracle in somebody's life if they don't want a miracle. I cannot help somebody get out of something if they don't want to get out of something. So Moses, I'm teaching these people how difficult it is to be a slave. God never explains that to Moses. God never shares his game plan with Moses. But God simply says, this is what I am going to do. Hallelujah. And how many times you come before God and say, God, why? God, why? You know what? You will never find the answer. You will never find the answer. Why? Even though you worked hard and you studied hard, you failed that exam. All you can take care of is what can I do now? What can I do to fix my life? How can I refocus on my mission? How can I depend on God for what is about to happen in my life? You know, uh, that is where we need to refocus our, our, our energy and, and time and not in the question of why it happened. Sometimes it's good to know why it happened because you may have a lesson to learn from that. But if you just 
always stay focused on the whys and not on the what's, you're going to be going in circles, friends. So, so God never gives them an explanation. God never says, I'm sorry. And, and, and God just says, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you victory in your life. You're going to overcome this. You're going to go through this dark cloud. You will not be defeated. You will be more than an overcomer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, friends. This is what God is speaking to Moses. He's saying, why focus on all those things? This is what I will do with my great might, with my great power, this is what I'm going to happen, make happen in your life. Friends, maybe you gave up on your dream, but God has not give up, given up on your dream in your life. Amen? God still wants to bless you. And this is why, number three, I want to talk about reintroduce God into your circumstances. Reintroduce God into our circumstances. Earlier when I was praying, I said, you know, if God is with us, why should I be discouraged? If God is with me, why should I be defeated? If God is with me, why should I feel sorry for myself? If God is with me, why should I complain and whine and moan and groan? Because the reason I'm doing it is because I don't believe God is with me at this very moment. But if I truly believe God is with me, I will know God's plan for my life. So if you are discouraged today, if you feel like you wanted to give up, I want you to refocus on God. I want you to come back to God and say, God, I have tried and tried and tried to do things my way, and I push through things my way, but God, I come to a point of surrender, and I want to be at your feet. I want to be at your feet. I want to be at your presence. I want to learn from you. I want to grow from you. I want, to, I want to hear your words. I want to hear your promises. Yes, Lord, the reality doesn't match what I hear from you. But God, I know that you are more than able to make this happen in my life. So, so for, you take your eyes off of the world and you put your eyes on God. You're refocusing not only your mission, you're reintroducing God into your circumstances, meaning you're putting your eyes upon God. Look at Exodus chapter 6, verse 2. God says, God also said to Moses, I am the Lord. Meaning, God is saying, I call the shots. I call the shots. Pharaoh may have said no, but I call the shots. Somebody go say, God, you call the shots. Hallelujah. God calls the shots. You know, God also said to Moses, I am the Lord. I appear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob as God Almighty, but by my name, the Lord. I also establish my covenant with them to give them the land of Canaan, where they resided as foreigners. Moreover, I have heard the groaning of the Israelites, whom the Egyptians are enslaving, and I have remembered my covenant." Friends, God says, I have remembered my promise, my covenant. God remembers the covenant he made with you. God knows the promises he has given you. He's the same God who appeared to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were not perfect people. They did not have things go their way all the time. Things actually did not go the way that they expected. It went in the opposite direction. But God was with them. Hallelujah. And God changed their life. And if God can do it for Abraham, and if God can do it for Isaac, and if God can do it for Jacob, God can do it for you in today's day and age. Hallelujah. In October 2020, God can do it again in your life. He can change things for you. So Moses had to come to a point in which he, it was all about him to a place where it was all about God. It was all about God. You know, I was uh, very troubled uh, recently because all these big name preachers keep falling. You hear about this one and then you find out he fell. And you hear about this one and you hear that he fell. And you hear about this one and you hear that he fell. And I'm like, God, what is going on? Why do these people fall? And uh, 
And this is what I learned this week, and it's because these people were so filled with energy and so filled with, with great hopes for the future, and they wanted to change the world, but they did not allow God to change them. Let me repeat that. These people who are so talented, so gifted, these men and women of God, they went out to change the world, but they did not allow God to change them. And because of that, they may have brought hundreds and thousands of people to the church, to, to God, but they themselves fell because they changed others, but they did not let God change them. So the, I've been meditating upon that. I've been thinking about that this whole week and think, saying to God, God, you know what? Yes, I'm, I'm doing this and that and that and this, and sometimes I take pride even uh, in all the different th things I'm juggling, you know, oh, this is so good. But you know what? If I think somehow I'm serving God through that, I'm deceiving myself. I need to allow God to change me. And for God to change me, I got to be still in his presence. I got to make it all about God and not about me. Friends, that is a, I think that's a cool, cool lesson to learn. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so there you go. And, um, and uh, look at what God says in verse number six of uh, Exodus chapter um, six. He says, therefore, say to the Israelites, I am the Lord and I will. Okay, whenever I say I will, I want you to say I will, okay? Or you should say God will, okay? Whenever I say I will, you should say what? God will, okay, all right. I am the Lord and I will. There you go, very good. Bring you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. I will free you from being slaves to them. And I will redeem you with an outstretched arm and with mighty acts of judgment. And I will take you as my own people. And I will be your God, then you will know that I am the Lord, your God, who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians, and I will bring you to the land I swore you with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. I will give to you as a possession. I am the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you live your life, it is easy to make it all about yourself. Your boss doesn't give you a promotion. What is the first thing that comes into your mind? He is not fair. He is not good. He doesn't realize how important I am. He gives this job to this other person. I hope he fails. <laughs> See, what we do is we make everything about our, us, ourselves. We make everything about us. We make everything about what we see with our eyes, and we think that that's all we can get. But it's not about me. It's not about us. It's not about what I can do for God. It's all about what God can do in me to change me. Because out of my heart, out of my belly shall flow fountains of living water. If I don't allow God to change my heart, what comes out of my mouth is filthy language, foul language, discouraging words. Uh, what comes out of my mouth is not wholesome or godly. So this morning, friends, let us be encouraged in God. Let us bring God back into the picture of our life. You know, maybe one day you started your journey and you said, you know, I am going to be a, 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 a prayer warrior. I'm going to pray. But you never prayed for a long time. This is the time to refocus your mission and come back to God. Reintroduce God into your life. Maybe you have try, stopped trying your battle against alcohol. Maybe you have stopped trying your battle against your uh, sexual addiction. Whatever it is, maybe you stopped trying now is the time to say, God, through you I can overcome. Through you I can overcome. Through, I, through you I can do great things.